Well, Cuba and the U.S. are expected to open embassies next week. Currently, the U.S. does have a sizable diplomatic presence in Havana, working out of what it's called an interest section rather than an embassy, without an ambassador is officially under the protection of Switzerland. CCTV's Michael Voss again spoke to the Swiss ambassador to Cuba about her country's role in the Cuba-U.S. relations. Anne Pascal Krauer Muller is the Swiss ambassador to Cuba. For more than half a century, the Swiss government has acted as the protecting power for U.S. interests in Cuba and at times as an intermediary. The U.S. diplomats based in Havana currently work out of what is formally called the United States Interests Section of the Embassy of Switzerland in Cuba. It's the same building that housed the original embassy, which was officially opened in 1953, while the U.S.-friendly dictator, Fulgencio Batista, was in power. But after Fidel Castro's revolution overthrew Batista in 1959, relations with the United States rapidly deteriorated. And in January 1961, Washington formally broke off diplomatic relations with Cuba. The U.S. ambassador and the entire staff emptied the building and headed home. The next day they asked the Swiss government uh, if it was ready to, uh, to take over that responsibility, which uh, they accepted. And so from that day on, the Swiss ambassador was the former representative of the U.S. government uh, in, in Cuba. The Swiss maintained a small consular staff in the building and looked after its upkeep. They were to take on a more important role during the Cuban Missile Crisis after the U.S. discovered that Fidel Castro had secretly allowed the Soviet Union to place nuclear missiles on the island. During the missile crisis, the Swiss uh, channel was used because especially the and the Swiss ambassador at the time uh, had a very uh, sort of a, a relation of, of confidence with uh, Fidel Castro and uh, had access uh, to him and he could convey to him a message that the Americans were not planning to uh, bombard uh, Cuba. In 1977, as relations thawed under former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, both sides agreed to open diplomatic missions. U.S. diplomats moved back into their old embassy, which was renamed the U.S. Interest Section. Since then, the Swiss have played a more formal, symbolic role rather than an operational one. Right. At the moment, and since 1977, uh, it has been a rather formal role, because as uh, United States and, and Cuba do not have uh, diplomatic relations, uh, the, they have an interest section here which is staffed by Americans and uh, Cuban uh, employees, but it's not an embassy, in an embassy, it's an interest section and it has to be under the protection of another country, and this country is Switzerland, and has been since 61. Uh, However, Switzerland says it played no role in the secret negotiations which led to the historic joint announcement last December by U.S. President Barack Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro. Finally, the Swiss role is coming to an end. From a Swiss point of view, what are the mechanisms for upgrading this from an interest section looked after by yourselves to a full U.S. embassy? So both countries will uh, send a, a note to the Swiss government saying that they have resumed their relations and so our mandate has uh, come to an end. A little sad to see this going? Or? That was uh, uh, an important element uh, of uh, the, uh, the foreign policy, of course, uh, an honor and a responsibility to have this type of mandate. But uh, basically, I think uh, our government can only be happy when, uh, when a mandate like this uh, comes to an end, because it means that uh, there, is, there are normal channels of communication between the country, that the normalization is, is on the way, and, and that's a positive thing. Ambassador, thank you very much. Thank you.